start. I yeah, mean, obviously, turning turning the page from from non-con to ACC now, I guess, and a familiar opponent for you, Link. I guess just how do things change this time of year? Do you have to change anything with approach or anything like that, or is it trying to keep? I mean, what's been working going going forward? Well, you have some data that's a little easier to access on the conference opponents that you've seen. And clearly, I know 25 of these guys, and so does Brad. So there's familiarity. And, you know, as you get into conference, they have data that they've logged through the games that applies more so because you're just more familiar with what's going on and you've seen it against your team. So – that's the only thing that really changes uh, for us. This is really what we thought we would do out of the gate with Leiter, Arnold, and Whitaker. We just hadn't gotten to that point yet, and it worked fine. Having Whitaker on Tuesdays was was great, and if we had needed him Tuesday to help us in that game, we would have used him for an inning. But this is the first time, really, when you see it actually line up. So I hope that's a positive thing. Uh, this program coming in here, just for me personally, some of the things that were accomplished there, pretty unique. Um, and some of the guys on that team had a hand in it. Pretty good run. Um, so you do reflect on some of those moments and experiences. Winning the league by four games a year we played only that the ACC games, I think it was. Hard to do to go to Knoxville and I think Notre Dame and Tennessee in that three-year span I was there, those were the two winningest programs in the country, and we had to go there and beat them. It's just a lot of neat moments that, that I remember, and a lot of those players are gone, but there's still some that we recruited that are still there, so you still have that piece to it. Um, and they're a good team, so you know you're getting into – another good team. I think we've played good teams. I think this is another really good team coming in here. You you talked about the uh, the rotation, finally getting Connor in that Sunday spot. I mean, looking back at last Sunday, I think there were there were quite a few ACC series that were in those Sunday games. There were a lot of runs scored. I'm sure for many teams, pretty much everybody, that's kind of the point of the weekend where you're just trying to get the staff like intact enough where you can get through that game and it might be kind of a leftovers type situation. How valuable is it now finally having Connor? I mean, a guy with such experience in that Sunday role, it's hard to imagine many teams will have starters who played in as many college games in those Sunday games as he has. When you go into this and you have that luxury of three capable starting pitchers, it's a good feeling. Now, like we talked about because of those three guys, Throwing Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the bullpen leverage guys, every one of these outs is important. And you just hope by doing this, you're shrinking some of the outs that are probably more important late in the game than early in the game. You're shrinking that because the starting pitchers are capable of getting you length out of the starts. I've talked about that since day one. It's really important. And we've seen some of these younger arms start to figure themselves out. And then you have Dorsey, who's new to the program, but not not a freshman, but new. Joe Charles, Oxford, short. So you have some experienced guys also to help, you know, Lauk and Rowan and Abraham and Saucer. And that gives you a good feel going into it. Now we need the starters to give us length. And we have to defend. They have to be efficient. Positionally, we have to back them up with solid defense, fundamental defense, above average plays to maximize what these three capable starters are doing. I think the uh, – go ahead, Asim. Go ahead. You're fine, Kurt. You're fine. Uh, I think uh, – I mean, the on-field impact of guys like Cam and James in the lineup is – I mean, it's evident with what they've done early this season. But when you bring in so many new faces, when they're two of only a couple guys in the lineup who kind of were here last year – how valuable are they in an off-field sense? Well, how valuable have they been in 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 that facet of of the game and the team? Well, Cam and Tibbs and Ferrer being on the field essentially every game last year and learning what we're trying to do, I think they help with the messaging to the new guys. Bringing 26 new people into the program. I mean, I was on teams here that didn't have 26 players at the end of the year, like on the team at all. 
I think we went to Omaha one year with 22 players. Um, the messaging and their understanding of what we're trying to do and how they want that locker room to feel, how they want the culture of that team to be off the field locker room, they have to bridge that. As coaches, we, we try to give the right messages. We try to present the correct information, tactics. But the older players or the players that have been through this at least for one year with us really help maybe clean up our verbiage and how we're trying to do things and the tactics that we're using and the things we're doing in the cage and the bullpen. And they're just an extension of what we're trying to do, and they're good leaders and they're good players. So it's a, it's a good combination to have. And Whitaker on the mound, same thing. Jamie Arnold on the mound, Ben Barrett, some of the guys that went through it last year, they know what we're trying to do. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to play flawless baseball, but at least there's a little more consistency with the messaging and their on-field performance has been good. Link, I, I know seemingly the, the end game was always end up here in Tallahassee for you. Um, you know, your coaching journey, how much of it, how interesting was it, I guess, that you ended one ended back here, but obviously 11 was here the whole time. So I guess you could have some patience in terms of building up your resume. Did, did you think Notre Dame would be that last sort of step to where you could prove yourself at that level? And if everything lined up, you could at that point then come back to Tallahassee and, and take over this program? Well, I don't think I ever approached any of this with the thought of being back here. Like that wasn't necessary. You're trying to do the absolute best you can do at Auburn, at Flagler, at East Carolina, at Mercer, at UNC Greensboro, at Notre Dame. And you go into these thinking that might be the spot you spend your coaching career. That's that's how I looked at it. And the accomplishments there, did I ever see that coming when I walked in there? You dream about it, but I wasn't sure that was going to happen in a three-year span of winning the league like we did and going to Mississippi State and really should have walked out of there going to Omaha and coaching against my son for a couple years. Um, the Super Regional in Knoxville was the most watched Super Regional event in the history of college baseball. Right, so some of these things, you can't draw this up, nor did I ever draw up thinking I was going to be back here. And it's just part of the evolution of coaching. And some I didn't know that I was ever going to be the coach at Notre Dame. Didn't know I was ever going to be an assistant coach at Auburn. I didn't. You just you don't know when these things are coming or why or how. Um, you're just fortunate to try to take advantage of some of these nice opportunities and make the most of it and leave a mark. And hopefully the programs are in better position if there's a time and a place for you to to move on. But it's not something I thought of ever. You go into it thinking this is where my kids are going to grow up. Like I thought my kids might grow up in Greensboro, North Carolina. Great. South Bend, Indiana at Notre Dame. That university and the way they treated my family, unbelievable. This opportunity happens. You're back home to help my parents, to help this program, to try to finish some things personally from a Florida State playing slash coaching feel that I had and wanted to do. You don't know that these things are ever going to happen. You just try to take full advantage if they do. Link, going back to something you said earlier about how you ask those veteran players to kind of bridge the gap between what you want, the messaging of the program, not just on the field, but some of those soft factors as well. How, how much fun has it been to kind of take a look at this team from the dugout, see the way they play, see the chemistry they've built? Because it seems, at least from an outsider perspective, this is a team that really likes playing with each other. They do. They like to win. They've got good trademarks. I, I've seen a lot of championship teams, and they have some of those trademarks, the intensity, the attention to the in-game details, the confidence because they feel that they have the capability to execute a lot of these asks from us as coaches. They work very hard. So the alignment of the traits of quality teams, I see it. And yes, it is fun to watch that and their enjoyment of their own execution and their performance and their physicality and their intensity these guys feed off of each other and they feed off of that. And that is a really good piece of a team. And it is unique that there's so many new guys on this team. 
And it is important that we got off to a nice start out of the gate. Did things kind of build? Can you maintain this level of play throughout a 60-game season? I, I don't know. I will tell you I like the way the guys have engaged and played. I like the intensity, and I like the execution. There's still things I see every day that I will go practice in a minute, and I'll walk out of here probably upset about certain things. But all in all, I'm so proud. And I told them I'm so proud of their engagement and how they've just stayed the course regardless of where we've gone, what we've done, who we've played. They've been consistent with their delivery. Anything else for Coach? Yeah, I'm sorry, Stephen. Uh, Coach, have you been able to to sense any, I don't know, momentum uh, from that win on, on Tuesday in terms of communication with – you know, high school coaches or, or prospects or anything of that like? Well, our guys have been all over the Southeast the last couple of days recruiting. It never ends. I mean, clearly when you play the way we, way we played and people have watched this, like people know. And I do think there's excitement and momentum. The recruiting never ends. Like our guys are, they're all over. My staff is all over the place. The recruiting, it's going on today. It'll be going on tomorrow morning. Like it just, it doesn't stop. So, there's the momentum within, and then, like you said, there is momentum and the view and the thought and what this looks like from the outside as you follow these programs. And I think our players are great representatives of what you want this to look like. They're high-character kids. They play with intensity. I think anybody that's watched recently would have a good feeling of popping on what it looks like viewing a Florida State game. So, yes, it's nice, and it's great for our assistants that are out I mean, there's guys that were at two games yesterday in different parts of the state, junior college games, high school games. This is this is the toughest time of the year to balance your own in-season preparation and performance with the recruiting, which is clearly one of the most important parts of constant success. Talking about that recruiting, I know it's only been, I guess, a few months. How much of a difference have you noticed the extra the extra coach who can be on the road, kind of the additional full-time staff member instead of the volunteer assistant? Gives you great flexibility. Great flexibility. And we have enough support with our graduate assistant that can perform some managerial duties so they can help feed a machine or bang a fungo. There's just all hands on deck. So people can go watch these high school or junior college games or go talk to people on the road and we can still have functional practices. We just sat in here for an hour to try to organize essentially what's going to be a two-hour practice to make sure the managers know exactly what they're doing in the cage, that Bryce and Rob, Sean, like that all hands are efficiently on deck so that the players have the practices and the training they need. Then they'll go into the weight room and – this is what running the program is all about, is, is making sure you're efficiently using your staff, your resources, obviously accommodating the guys when we practice on campus this time of year. And these are shorter practices in the middle of this grind that we're in. And then keeping up with the recruiting as best you can. You're looking at all different ages and types of players. So it's a lot. It's a lot to balance, but but our staff does a good job of handling it. I, I have... Oh, go ahead. Just like, are you getting a better feel for, you know, Kyle Pearson said during the telecast that the only, you know, quote, knock you could think about Florida State right now is their bullpen depth. But that applies to every program in the country at this point in the season. Are you getting a better feel? I mean, with the amount of guys you're able to put out there in Gainesville in big situations, just who will be able to be relied on in important, you know, high leverage situations? Yeah, I mean. I thought I had that feel going in, and it's playing out in most cases like I thought. I wanted to get Rowan and Lout and Saucer and Abraham involved in this. How and when that was going to happen and how often and on what stage, I wasn't sure, but I knew that was going to be a critical piece if you're going to start the guys that you thought you were going to need to start, which we will see it this weekend. So that that's why I talk about them lengthening out diminishes the repetitiveness and the length of the duration out of some of the guys in the bullpen that are clearly younger. Getting Armstrong back 
where he's starting to find his rhythm and build his pitch count will help us. So I do like what I've seen. I think Lauk and Rowan being freshmen, that was pretty good stuff they're running up there. They went through the teeth of that lineup, each of them, and you saw some stuff. It wasn't efficient enough. The, the command wasn't great. But those moments are irreplaceable. We can do all the work in the bullpen and in scrimmages we want, but when you're in front of 9,000 people in a televised, like, national impact-type game to run out there and do that, that was great. That was great for them. And coming off their injuries, it tells you what they've done with Phil, our trainer, to get back to the point where they were probably better than before they got hurt. So – it was nice, and we're going to have to keep leaning on these guys, and there's going to be growing pains, but there is growing, and we'll deal with any of the pains along the way, but I see those guys maturing. Ling, I know you have a, a three uh, freshman early enrollees right now in the football world. I know they can't be the, who have kind of said they still want to play or plan to play on the team starting next year. I guess I know they can't be with the baseball team right now. They're about to start spring football in that world. What what are they able to do right now? And I guess how excited are you to see them this time next year be a part of managing both? Yeah, right now they're doing football. And, you know, they enrolled and they need to manage what they're doing in their football world. And when that when that settles and wraps up, then Mike and D Ray and the staff will figure out what the correct maneuvers for them are with baseball. And clearly there are rules in play on what they can and can't do. But within that, we've cooperated with the football staff in the recruitment of these guys. And then as they finish, like that's a lot to roll into that world as really a high school senior, right? And try to jump in there and learn all of the things that are going on in this level of a football operation. They need to focus on that. Once that settles, then we'll engage and onboard them through the football staff with what they're able to do within the rules over here. So good, good athletes. Clearly, you know, they have one thing on their mind right now, and that's to handle and figure out what this looks like in the, in the football building. 